the reason you fight with people is because you feel them as a threat. You feel you need to defend yourself against them. So even before you've met someone, there is a... A, a deep feeling, even before it is rationalized in the mind, that this person that you're about to engage with is, is a threat to you. And therefore, you go to the meeting, to the conversation, feeling that you have to protect yourself. And Everything that takes place in the conversation, not everything, but much of what takes place in the conversation is simply a reflection of that feeling that you have, that you need to protect yourself, you need to defend yourself against the, the other, against the threat of the other. Surprise, surprise, the other does feel threatening. Not because they really are threatening, it's because you have brought an attitude of defense to the relationship. And the other is simply appearing in conformity with your underlying feeling. So why do we have this underlying feeling that others are a threat to us? It is because we have an even deeper feeling that we are something that is objective, that can be destroyed, that can be threatened, that can either be diminished in relationship or aggrandized in relationship. And therefore we enter into relationships either seeking to aggrandize ourselves through the relationship, that that's not what you're talking about, or to protect ourselves from being diminished. In, in your case, it, it's the latter. But in it, it, both these two movements, trying to aggrandize oneself through relationship or to protect oneself from being diminished, are um, really the same movement. And that is, it, it's, it's a, a way that the separate self uh, perpetuates itself. So at the heart of this feeling that you need to protect yourself against the hostile other, is the belief that what you are is something small and limited and fragile and that can be so easily hurt or upset or abused or mistreated or, or you're none of those things. How could you abuse the empty space? What could you do to the empty space of this room to upset it or hurt it? What could the character in the movie do to the screen, to upset the screen? I mean, does the screen mind if, if, if the couple split up? Or who wins the match? Or, no, it, 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 it's totally open to whatever happens. It has nothing to defend because what it is is not an object. Only an object can be defended or aggrandized. So this conflict that you, repetitive conflicts that you find in relationship have got nothing to do with the other person and everything to do with the, your core feeling about yourself and the place to attend to this situation in your life is not with your, the other people, as you well know from your mother and, and it doesn't work. The place to attend to it is in yourself and, and the... the the most direct and, and effective way of dealing with it is to go in straight to what you essentially are and discover that. Don't spend time improving what you are not. Your body, your mind, all, all these, that, that will follow suit. Your relationships will clear up as a byproduct of this, of this understanding. Discover what you are. I, and when I say discover, I don't mean think about it and talk about it. I mean really go in your experience until, until it dawns on you, yes, I am obviously this, this openness, 
this wide openness in which all experience takes place. And it, it's, a, it's not an inert openness, it's a knowing openness in which my thoughts arise, in which the image of my mother arises, in which the sound of my next door neighbor arises. I, I am just this totally allowing openness that has no opinion about anything, that has no likes or dislikes, that no preferences, no agenda, nothing to gain from a relationship, nothing to lose from a relationship. Find that. So it's the, the problem is the likes and the dislikes. The problem is? The likes and the dislikes. Whose likes and dislikes? Who, who are you talking about? Me. No, you, this openness, yeah. that does the space in this room as each of us comes through the door, does, that does the space, oh, I don't like her earrings, and no, I don't like his shirt, and no, oh yes, she's nice, she can come in, but no, I don't like the look of it. Is the space doing that? No. You, you are this, this openness, this aware empty openness in which all your thoughts, all your likes and your dislikes and everything else take place. Your, your likes and dislikes are for thought, not for you. They are for thought. It's thought that does the liking and the disliking. It's not you. Leave your thoughts alone. Don't pay attention to your thoughts. Give yourself your attention. See if you find any likes and dislikes there. Or, or whether yourself is just wide open to experience as it is, unconditionally open. Th that's the thing to find in yourself. You, it's not a thing, obviously, and you don't find it in yourself. It is yourself. That, it's to know yourself as that. And I don't mean in some kind of vague uh, kind of uh, i mean literally uh, as 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 concrete as as these things seem to be it it's that concrete yes i am that which knows my experience which knows my thoughts but is not itself a thought that knows my feelings but is not itself a feeling that knows my sensations and perceptions but is not itself a per sensation or perception in other words i am just Knowing, pure knowing, pure sensitivity, pure openness. 